Okay, this morning we're going to talk about two types of high fin zip-off rings. Uh, the high fin gene in uh, zip-off rings was discovered back, way back in the 50s or 60s by a uh, lady with the last name of Simpson. I can't remember her first name. And for a long time, and it was in sword tails, and for a long time it was called Simpson high fin. Uh, it was pretty easy to transfer that gene to uh, others of offerings to moculatus and variatus type platys, uh, since sword tails, platys, uh, moculatus, variatus, all, all the members of Zephophorus easily hybridize. Uh, so, an interesting thing about the Simpson high fan gene is that it is a homozygous lethal. Uh, Homozygous means that you have two copies of the same allele of a gene. And a high fin, the, that gene has normal fin and it has high fin. Uh, if an egg uh, carrying the chromosome with high fin is fertilized by a sperm carrying high fin, the embryo dies. As a result, you can't get a true breeding strain of high fin, some, some high fins. Uh, regardless what, uh, whether you're working moculatus, variatus, or sword tails. Uh, so the, the best you can expect if you have all high fin breeders, the best you can expect is three quarter high fins, one quarter low fin. And that's because every one of those breeders is carrying the recessive allele for normal fin, normal dorsal. Uh, Oops, I'm going to take a really quick break. There is a you know, swallowtail butterfly trapped in our fan. I'll be right back. Well, Susie let me have some room. I don't know how I'm going to get it out. Okay, that's going to be without taking off the screw. So we'll come back and do that. Oh, it got out by itself. Let's see if I can capture it. Uh, <laughs> the greenhouse is not a, fa uh, a uh, favorable place for swallowtails. Okay, Stormy, if that butterfly goes against the... I want to take it outside. It'll die in here. See if you can catch it. Are your hands dry? Relatively dry? Not dripping wet? Okay, don't miss it. You missed it. You got lucky. Okay, put your other hand over it so it doesn't fly away. And take it out. Yeah, it likes you. This is tired. Take it outside. Let it fly off. That's a black swallowtail, common butterfly here. They come in the greenhouses and don't do too well in here. There's nothing for them to eat. Okay, there it went. Okay, now we can go back to fish. Okay, I was talking about uh, that you could only, uh, with the normal high fin gene, uh, or allele technically, you can only get three, uh, even if all of your breeders are high fins, you get on average three quarter high fins, one quarter low fins. Uh, and that's because every one of those breeders is carrying the recessive allele for normal high fin, for normal dorsal. Uh, but three of us, at least, Glenn T and Takashita out of, of uh, Hawaii, and I think John, Dr. John Lyons, and then us, have discovered a high fin that is not a homozygous lethal. Now, what I don't know is, it, is it an allele of the same gene? Uh, is it a, another gene that modifies the high fin uh, uh, characteristics so that it's not a homozygous lethal? I don't know. We got ours uh, in 2003 after Hurricane Claudette. We were looking, now we have a bird in here. <laughs> That's a little wren. Oh, it's building a nest in here. Means I'm going to have to leave the door open. That's Carolina wren. They are, they're real pains because they, uh, if you leave your car door, car window down for 
a half an hour, they've already built a nest in it. Uh, they, uh, they're very quick about it. Uh, we had to leave a, a bathroom window open uh, for a few weeks when a pair built a, a nest in a ewer, and which is a, some sort of base of some sort, and a uh, pitcher, whatever. Uh, and they, until their chicks fledged and left, we had to leave the window open so they could come in and out to feed them. Uh, okay, back to fish. <laughs> uh, the well, we got in 2003 after Hurricane Claudette, we lost almost all of our rainbow breeders and we were doing primarily rainbow fish at the time. We had started with live bears and some cichlids. We ordered a, some fish from Florida to restock and we got in a box of about 250 mixed high thin platies. Uh, we color sorted those and started developing uh, color strains. Uh, from those, and after a few generations, I noticed that in in one of the breeding colonies, uh, a a fish that we call blue freckled maculatus, that is blue fish with black uh, freckles on it, that we were getting ninety five percent high fins, and so I set up a breeding colony with only high fins, and after a couple generations, we were getting 100%, meaning that we'd gotten rid of the uh, recessive normal uh, dorsal. So that's good. We started trying to transfer that to other strains because it's a pain to separate out color, uh, or not, not only color types, but fin types. Uh, so we call this a, a true breeding. What I don't know, again, as I said earlier, before we got interrupted by butterflies and birds, I don't know if it's an allele of the same gene uh, that's just a little bit different and therefore not uh, a lethal, homozygous lethal, or whether it is a, uh, a gene, an allele on another gene that modifies. Uh, it, testing that gets to be pretty complicated you know, so a di that would be a dihybrid genetic cross and and uh, teasing out what it is is beyond what I want to do especially because it would require raising virgin females to make sure you have to raise virgin female platies and swords and guppies and mollies because they store sperm so once they're exposed to one male uh, you can't be sure that subsequent matings to another male are only that uh, subsequent male's offspring. So I'm not going to do that, but it'd make a great uh, project for somebody to tease out whether that is, is an allele of the same gene. Okay, Susie, we're going to focus up here, not down there. Okay, I've got two jars here. These are, these are sunset variatus. These two males, or three males, are I've picked as breeders for our high fin sunsets. These are the non-true bleeding, uh, true breeding high fins. Uh, and I have, let's see, I think I've got, if I look at the chart over here, I have 20 high fin females that they're gonna go in with, and we'll get about three quarters high fins out of this mating. This jar has looks like five males that are in the uh, of the true breeding high fin uh, type and I've se selected uh, 36 regular females to mate them to uh, and uh, I've got two high uh, true breeding high fin females also but I want to get a bunch of fish uh, and the females let me uh, get a jar here. The females are kind of a motley group because I want to get this gene transferred to them. I'm going to put these guys with their breeders, with their females. Okay, and then over here I have, Susie, you want to hand me that net back there? Thank you. I have the 38 females I'm going to put with these true breeding males. And you can see they're kind of a motley group, uh, various different colors and stuff. 
but that's fine. Gives me a chance. This is an interesting female. She's a, a true breeding high fan female. And obviously, I, I must have done a cross to uh, uh, Blue Mickey Mouse, uh, Moculotus, at some point. There's another one in there that looks like her. Uh, and that that's a tuxedo, some sunset females. That female's probably too old to breed, but I hate throwing braider females away. I let them retire themselves in the past. Besides, if she does have offspring, she's going to be passing on genes for longevity. Okay, so we've got these two different breeding colonies. One with mostly normal females, and all the males are true breeding high fins. And then another breeding colony that's all high fin, but non-true breeding high fin. And then we've got a, some miscellaneous uh, buckets I'm going to take care of. Uh, some young uh, high fins to grow up. Okay, good fish keeping.